Hi friends, welcome to Creative DIY Purpose. If you enjoy quick, easy, thrift flipped ideas, then I think you're gonna enjoy the projects in today's video. Join me as we give some thrifted items a fresh new makeover. For project number one, if you'd like to take a screenshot, here's the tools and materials that I used and the two wood rounds I purchased right on walmart.com. I used fine grit sandpaper to make sure that they were nice and smooth. And I applied two coats of cotton paint from Dixie Bell. After a few hours, they were completely dry. And I took the French Ad ink stamps from IOD and lightly applied ink over the stamp and then placed it on top of each wood round. The reason that I wanted them faded was to give it an old age vintage look. I repeated the process on the second wood round. That one came out a little too faded right in the bottom section. So I just took one of the little seals and stamped that right down on the bottom. Next, I took some fine grit sandpaper, went along the edges again to give it a worn look, and then ran that sandpaper right up over the top to give it a little bit more of an even look. Then lightly taking the ink pad and running it along the edges of the wood round just to give it a little bit more interest. And then doing both those steps to the second wood round. I purchased two metal stands at the thrift store. I think I might've paid a dollar each for them. And they were really, it's thin metal up around the top. So I was concerned that I needed a little bit more than some E6000 glue. So I took a heavy duty stapler and went along and added three staples just to help um, adhere it a little bit better. And they did not poke through. They were the perfect size and they're around, they're on there pretty tight. Then before sealing it, I decided to take some of the copper gilding wax from Dixie Bell I love. Then applied just a small amount right on the tips of the feet. The final step was to adding two coats of spray sealer from Krylon. You guys will have to let me know what you think. The total cost of both pieces was $4. This next project was one of my favorites. If you guys want to screenshot the materials and tools that I used for this project, I have a beautiful customer that sent me this vintage music and a, such a sweet note. And I'm so excited. I'm going to keep some of it, but I decided to use a few pieces. I took two thrifted um, picture frames. One that you'll see right there is metal. And then the next one that you'll see for this project is wood. I painted them both using the Dixie Bell color and cotton. And then I applied one of the transfers from IOD called the Whispering Willow right on to the sheet music. I decided that the frame needed a little bit more. I did take some of the copper gilding wax and went along the edges. I do end up giving it a pop of color, and I'll show you how I do that in just a little bit. But first, we're going to add the transfer on to the other piece of sheet music for the wooden picture frame. I love how easy these transfers are to apply. Please let me know if you guys have tried the transfers and which ones are your favorite, because I would definitely love to use them a lot more in the future. Now, I did make one mistake that I want to share with you guys, give you a tip. I should have measured out and cut the music first. <laughs> Thankfully, you know, because I kept putting the frame on top to make sure that I was all lined up. Thankfully, it was even, but it would have been so much easier if I just did this process first. I'm taking the sheet music here after I trim off the edges and I'm going to apply it onto a piece of cardstock using just some regular Elmer's stick glue. And that worked out very well. It did not have any wrinkles or bubbles or bumps. Then for both frames, I added the cardboard that came with it, put the backs on them just to make sure that they were nice and even. Now, one of these I frames I have up for sale with the glass on and the other one without. So I will let you guys know in a future video if one sells and the other one doesn't. So I repeated the process for the second picture frame. So I have this eyeshadow palette and it's actually expired. I didn't know that that kind of stuff expired. It was one that my daughter had for play and she's been turning it into almost like watercolors. 
And so I thought here, I'll just take it on and use it dry and see if I can't add a pop of color and maybe some shimmer to it. And guys, it worked. I did it along the frame. I did it in some of the creases. And I'm thinking you could even add some of that to some clear wax and make your own colored wax that way. I applied it to both the frame and the music. And then I will seal it in with some of the Krylon spray sealer. So for this picture frame, the colors picked up very beautiful, but I noticed that the gilding wax was a little too dark. I do wipe that back with a BB wipe because it was just kind of overpowering the flower in the center and I wanted to soften it up. So just to let you know, the eyeshadow adhered beautifully to the paper, metal, and to the wood. And there it is all ready for spray sealer. You guys will have to let me know what you think. See. Let me know if you've tried eyeshadow for color. And if not, maybe you've tried some other products that you have laying around the house that worked out well for you. Let me know. All right, so our next project is a floral woven basket. And it was very orange, but I love this wooden basket. It actually sold a couple days ago in my booth. So it was only in there for sale for a few days. Up along the edges, they had Velcro in there. I did remove that and I do show you guys in the end how to fix that. All right, we're gonna take two coats of the Dixie Belle Boss Stain Blocker. This stuff is amazing. So you apply one coat, on to any type of surface that you feel is going to bleed through let it dry for i think it's about three hours then you go over with that second coat and let that sit overnight and it just saves so much time and so much frustration because nothing's worse than spending your time painting something to go back and realize that it bled through it's just it can sometimes just be a nightmare so this for me is an easy way to avoid all that frustration. After that, I had a chance to dry overnight. The next morning I went in with a coat of the cotton paint from Dixie Belle. And I did apply two coats because I really wanted them to get down in those creases. I did all along the woven parts of the basket, but left the inside and the bottom is just the natural wood color. I did allow the basket to dry overnight. And then I took one of the napkins that I purchased at the Dollar Tree in 2022 and cut along the edges of the top, right along the flowers. Everything that I have made and put in my booth that has had this napkin on has sold. So I definitely need to start using more of it. So one of the biggest tips that I can give you when applying a napkin on to any type of your woven basket or your woven surface, I use the dry chalk paint brush after I apply the Mod Podge very thinly and push down into each and every piece that you possibly can. And this gives it such a nice finished look, almost like it's been painted right onto the basket. Another tip is to apply the napkin on in small sections, you know, just working a small section at a time. And I did use this tiny paint brush here to apply the Mod Podge. And I'm applying it both vertically and horizontally to make sure it gets down inside all of those little cracks. And then right along the edge there on the side, you see a little bit excess napkin. I do take a Zacto knife and cut that napkin off. All right, so for this inside piece, you could still kind of see where the glue is on there, even though I did use the sander to try to get it off. You could still see it and it bothered me. So I'm just taking some thin white lace going along the edges using the hot glue gun and I burnt my finger. <laughs> so try not to try not to do that. That it kind of hurts. Then we're down to the final two steps, some fine grit sandpaper right along the edges to give it some distress and two coats of the Krylon spray sealer in the matte finish. Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite type of go-to sealer? Okay, this project is a wrap, and I think it would look so nice as a little plant basket. All right, so for this next project, I picked up this wall tile at the thrift store. I want to say for around $2. I love quick, easy projects like this. I applied two coats of the Dixie Belle paint in the color cotton, and while it is still a little damp, 
going over it with a baby wipe, trying to bring out some of the details. Now this step did take me a while because I wanted to make sure that it was all even and that I didn't have too much um, wiped off from one area that I didn't on the other. I, I did have to go back and do a little bit of touch up, but I love the way it came out. And I did spray this as well with two coats of the Carlon spray sealer. So I painted it white because that seems to sell very well in my booth, but what color would you have painted it? All right, so this next project will give you some ideas on what to do with those vintage bottles. The ones that you try to sell for just a couple bucks and are still around. Um, so far, all of the painted glass bottles that I've put in my booth have sold. This one I hated painting because I loved the color purple. But in the inside of this bottle, it was foggy. And I tried rubbing alcohol. I tried hot water. And then I also tried, you know, just regular soap and water and apple cider vinegar. You guys will have to let me know. What, what would you have tried? So what I'm painting on right now is some of the slick stick from Dixie Bell. And I've been applying this every time that I do anything with glass because I wanna make sure that it adheres very well. And I'm not going over the entire bottle. I'm gonna leave the bottom exposed as well as the neck of it because those parts weren't foggy, they were nice and clear. And that way you can kind of see the original color of the bottle. I applied one coat of the slick stick then I applied one coat of the cotton. Once I had a chance to dry, see how it kind of bubbled up there because I was uh, moving the paint while it was still wet. It makes it so much easier to sand it after it's dried because it's just gonna come up. It almost reminds me of like milk paint. And I know it's very distressed. Some people don't like it, but I'm gonna try it and see if it sells. And this part did take me probably a, a little bit longer than it should, but I kind of had it in the back of my mind how I wanted it. So these napkins I purchased a couple months ago at the Christmas tree store. And again, everything I put that lavender napkin onto in my booth is sold um, so far. So I'm just going to keep running with it. I applied it on with some Mod Podge, going over it a little bit more up at the top with some fine grit sandpaper. I do use two coats of the spray sealer and I tacked on some of the vintage lace that I had with a little bit of faux lavender, which is linked in the description box below. You guys will have to let me know what you think. And here's those napkins if you want to take a screenshot and see if you can find them somewhere. And then that little picture right there sold in my booth right away. So did the two bunnies and so did that little birdhouse. And then that cutting board sold right away as well. So I decided to add that napkin onto this little wooden box that I had. That I did apply like three or four coats of spray sealer and because I wanted to make sure that it was really locked in there. But I like the way that that little box came out. And again, it's just the cotton paint from Dixie Bell, a little distressing along the edges. And I think that box sold as well, I'll have to check. And this is a napkin that I added onto a basket that had a little bit of a piece missing on the sides of it. I took a one ply white napkin, Mod Podge that over the entire front, and then cut the lavender napkin into three sections. Applied that on with Mod Podge and did two coats of spray sealer. Next, we're gonna upcycle another metal tray. So this little metal tray sold in only a few days. I will also link a video on to the end of this one, so just stick with me. It's where we upcycled a metal tray a few weeks ago, and that one sold right away as well. So this was a metal tray that I applied slick stick to, let that dry, applied two coats of the Dixie Belle paint and cotton, and then this is one of the IOG transfers from the Whispering Willow set, and it's just a beautiful set. Because it's a textured surface, I'm definitely taking my time while applying the transfer, just making sure that it's you know, really adhering on well. And before I apply the Krylon spray sealer, I want to add some gilding wax um, in the color copper right along the edges. And I do use a paintbrush. Um, it's very easy to use your finger. But I find that with nails, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. So this was almost done, but I decided to try to add a pop of color 
onto the tray. So I'm mixing up two of the colors from the eyeshadow packet. I'm like really gonna be on the hunt now for eyeshadow because this works so well. Um, it's just like using chalks. And you don't have to worry about getting it too dark because you'll see what I do here in a little bit um, to help blend it in. And you can keep layering it as much as you'd like to achieve the look that you want. And then I take the same dry brush that I used before on a project and go right along the edges. And if you just wanna get off you know, the excess eyeshadow, that's fine. But you can also rub a little bit harder if you wanted to blend it more and wipe back some of the color. And then three coats of the spray sealer because I wanna make sure that it is all sealed very well. Friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some inspiration tucked inside. I pray that you all have a super blessed week, and I hope to see you soon. And here's two more videos for you in case you missed the last two videos that I posted. And it also shows the projects in them that I mentioned earlier. God bless.